ways that kind of decide. Okay? So it's often helpful to think about statistics as sort of the, uh, the study of variation and trying to understand why data, data are different, why one observation is different from another, or come up with a model to try and explain why the data are all not the same. Right? That's one, perhaps one useful way to think about what statistics is and how we can use statistics. So I have some data up here, and uh, let's pretend we've never seen any of this data before, right? And let's say that uh, I wrote it down this way because if I wrote it all in one long column, I'd have to write it too small, and it would be difficult to see, right? But just looking at this set of data here uh, from a very basic perspective, what can we say about the data? counted up the number of observations or anything like that. We haven't done any histograms or any frequency tables or anything, but what's one thing that we can sort of immediately say about the data? They're different. They therefore vary, <laughs> right? That's great. That's, that's the point at which it's sometimes, when you think about ANOVA, that's a really good place to start, is that these data, there, this is the same data, by the way, that we that we dealt with for the past two classes. So it's, uh, this is the data that's in this data um, code that I gave you last week. All right. Wow. Okay. All right. So when we say that they vary, it's also it's also a good good idea to, or a good exercise to go back and review basic concepts. So when we say vary, what does that mean? There's a couple of ways we've talked about what it means to vary. What does it mean to vary? They're not, They're not all the same, right? And then we talked about this idea of variance, right? So what is variance? How spread out they are. But when we talk about spread out, usually we're thinking of spread out from from a central location, right? Right. So in this case, it's variance is a, a good way to think about variance is the, de is the degree to which the data are dispersed around its mean. All right. So let's let's I'm going to write that down in words because when we think about the analysis of variance, it's a, it's a good idea to keep in mind what variance is in words. So says Siri. These green markers are pretty useless. So if we think about, we can sort of conceptualize that, right? The data are going around the mean. But what else do we know about the, why is the mean so important? Or why do we often look at the mean when we're interested in describing a set of data in a parsimonious way? It's the best estimate. Why is it the best estimate? So by best, often we want to define a criteria for best, right? Not that it's the expected value. What does that mean? And most likely to be right. But, but by when we say right, we have to have some criteria by which we decide or judge rightness. No error. No error, right? Zero error, right? And that's one of those assumptions that go into our distributional assumptions of our errors, right? Error is normally an independently distributed with an expected value of zero and some constant variance, right? Okay, so that's good to think about. So why don't we start from scratch, okay? So let's, why don't we start by computing the overall mean of these data, all right? I, 
because the data are set up like this. Um, let's make it easy on ourselves. And uh, let's do some sort of a, some arithmetic this way. All right. So for the sake of ease, let's, uh, if I sum up this column and this column and this column and add them up, I get the, the grand total, right? So let's start by summing up each of the columns, and then we'll go from there. together, right, to get the overall total. Anybody else get these numbers? 58 is the first one. 58 is the first one. That's good. We would have caught that error, by the way. Because when we added up all of our deviates, they wouldn't have equaled. Mm -hmm. So what happens when I add them all up? I get a grand total, right? Mm -hmm. What's that grand total come out to be? calculators on them, so we have computers in front of you. 220. I get to. All right, 220. All right, so to calculate a mean, I also need to figure out how many observations went into that, right? Mm -hmm. So how many observations went into this 58? Eight. Eight. And how many went into this 71? Eight. And how many went into that 91? Nine. Nine. Okay. So eight, eight, and nine ought to give me... 25. 26, 24, 25. <laughs> 25. <laughs> I tried 25. You were children. <laughs> 25. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now I have everything I need to compute my, my, uh, my grand mean, right? My overall mean. And okay, for the sake of Pajas, what is, how do I do that? I mean, basic, right? Mm -hmm. You said you wanted to do this by hand. Mm -hmm. So how would I do that? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know what, what we meant. <laughs> 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 the sum divided by n. Oh, very good. So 220 <coughs> divided by 25. Right. What is that? Was that coming out of the 8.8. Thank you. So, good, now we have that. All right, so let's take a look at the ANOVA table here. All right, so this is the table that we're going to fill in. All right, this is the table that we're going to fill in. So, let's, now let's place some structure on the data. All right, before we were just looking at the data, we didn't know anything about it. And we just were looking at the data as sort of one giant homogeneous piece of data. And our observation about the one big giant uh, set of data is that not all the numbers are the same. Right? And what we want to be able to do is see, um, do we know something about the structure of the data that could help explain why all those numbers are not the same? To help explain why the numbers vary. Analysis of variance. Right? We get that? That's what we're trying to do here. All right. All right. So it's uh, not by accident that we have three columns here. So in the data, what, what we're now going to do is we're now going to impose some structure on the data. So here, uh, these data really represent um, the outcomes of people of uh, 25 people, each of which were randomly assigned to one of three treatment groups. The people in this column were randomly assigned to receive treatment A. The people in this column were randomly assigned to receive treatment B. And the people in this column were randomly assigned to receive placebo. OK? 
Okay. So now when we look at the data overall, we see the fact that there's data, that the data are not the same overall, right? But now that we've imposed more structure on the data, not only can we see is there some overall variance, right? But do we see variability within each of the groups, right? So if this is the only structure that we've placed on the data, there's something else about the data that we can't explain, right? We can't explain, we don't know why each of the data points within each of those groups, that word, within each of those groups are not the same, right? So there's gonna be some errors in our predictions. There's gonna be some variability in the data that we can't explain. We don't account for it in our model, right? So while we're at it, we've done a lot of the heavy lifting already. Let's see if the, if the, if the means vary between the groups, right? So let's compute the means for these. So uh, what's 58 divided by eight? 7.25. Seven and a quarter. And what is 71 divided by 8? 8.875. And 9 goes into 91. 10.1 times. So now what do we see? Now if I look at these group means, are the group means the same? No. So now, not only do we have some overall variability, Right? And we have variability within the groups. We also see that there's variability between the groups. So what we want to do is we want to be able to say, well, is the variability between the groups more than what we would expect by chance? Or is that group, is that variability systematic? Is there some systematic differences between groups A, B, and C? Right? Can, does this, imposing this structure of A, B, and P, um, does that explain some significant <coughs> variability in the data? Right? And that's what we're going to do with the analysis of variance. And what's variance? The degree to which the attempt is going to And we've just identified three sources of variability. So we've identified the total variability, right? If we look at the data overall, there's not all the values are the same. Then when we impose some structure on the data, we see that there's some variability within the groups, right? And then when we look at the means of each of these groups, we see that there's some variability between the groups, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, develop a model where we want to be able to compare is the variability between the groups significantly more than the variability within the groups. Okay. And further what we're going to say is, is we're going to say that these two sources of variability are going to add up to the total variability. which is what we've been doing all along, okay? Right. So I'm gonna keep that in mind, right? And, and back before, when we were talking about variability, when, you know, sort of we did a sum and then we divided it by n, we got a mean, and we talked about the mean as being nothing more than a transformed sum, right? Right? So if you look over here on the, on the analysis of variance table, these, this is the, uh, let's look at the column headings here. So we have the source. This is the source of the variability. So there's total variability. These are actually indented. And because they're indented, what we're saying is that these two things make up the total. Right? So we have the total variability, total variability, and its sources of variability are going to be things between groups, things that we know about in our model. 
and there's going to be variability within the groups, right? So how are we going to estimate this, this variability? It's all going to come from the sums of squares. Right? And then we're going to get degrees of freedom, mean square is, or ms is means mean squared, which is nothing more than the degrees of freedom, freedom going into the variance, which you all know as. So if I were to write this down, you know that, what's that statistic? That's variance. That's variance. And what are we doing? Analysis of that. So mean squared is the degrees of freedom into sums of squares. That's what ms is. Average squared distance. And then our test statistic for the ANOVA is going to be our F ratio or our, or our F statistic. So we can start anywhere in these two columns. Where would you like to start? You want to start with the easy part? That's a good place to start. Okay, so if I wanted to compute the overall variance of, in this data, right? We know that there are 25 observations in the data, right? How many of those 25 observations are free to be whatever they want to be and still have that sum be 220? 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. It's always going to be n minus 1. Right? It's always going to be n minus 1. So in this case, the, the total degrees of freedom for these data are 24. Right? Okay. Now we can look at either between or within. What do you want to do next? This is your show. I'm just going to help you. I'm just going to be your guide, your tour guide. Between. You want to do between. Okay, so how many... When we talk about, okay, first of all, when we talk about total variance, the total variance, it's helpful to think about or understand what the hell that means, right? So the total variance represents the degree to which all of these scores vary around its mean. What's the, the mean of all of these scores? It's going to be the grand mean. Make sense? So with respect to the between groups variance, right, the between groups variance, that represents the degree to which the group means are going to vary around their mean. So what is going to be sort of be the weighted average of the group means? It's going to be the grand mean. So how many of these three values can be whatever they want to be and still have the weighted mean of these three values be 8.8? Two. Two. So in general, the between group sums of squares is going to be k minus 1 or 2. So again, when we do the analysis of variance, it's helpful to think around about what's varying around what. So now we have the within groups variance. The within group variance. Does anybody have a, can anybody venture a guess as to what the within group variance represents? Does that mean how, like how much each of those values differ? Yes, that's exactly right. So the within groups variance is the degree to which each of the individual values in the respective groups vary around their respective means. Right? Because if you think about it, we talked about why did why are these values in group A different? And your answer is, oh. Right, that's the answer. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Lots of things. I didn't put it in my model. Therefore, the fact that I can't perfectly predict people in value about the scores for people in group A, B, and P means that there's going to be some 
very good error in my model, right? So the within groups variance is the degree to which each of these scores varies around this mean, the degree to which each of these scores varies around this mean, and so on, right? So how many degrees of freedom do you think they're going to be there? 22. Hmm? 22. Yeah, but how did you get that? Um. Right, let's think about 25 this observations. Right. And then, um, it's n minus 1 within each group. Yes. So the total is minus 3. That's so exactly right. Right? 22. So if I have n people in my study, mm -hmm. how many means am I going to compute? I'm going to compute k of those means. It gives me n minus k degrees of freedom. And oddly enough, look at this. It's, it's additive. 2 plus 22 gives me 24, which gets us back to that parsing of the variance, right? Mm -hmm. Make sense? OK. Well, that was the easy part. Now comes the laborious part. But we actually can't go any farther until we do the sums of squares. So um, let's uh, let's pick one of the pick one of the bottom two rows because the total one is a lot of work. Between. Going to between? Okay. So here's how we're going to write down. Well, let's talk about what is the between group sums of squares. Let's conceptualize that in our head. When we talk about the between group source of variance, we have to ask ourselves, OK, what's varying around what with respect to that between group's variance? And the answer to that question is it's the degree to which the expected values vary around the grand mean. Right? So if I'm going to write down the between group sums of squares, It's going to look like this. Can you all see that OK? I'll go through it in a minute. Can you see it OK? OK, so you know what this is, right? This is the summation operator, right? All right, so I'm going to sum from j equal 1 to k. K, we've been using K to describe what? Number of groups. The number of groups that we have. Now we have N dot J. All right, so N dot J, now we have two subscripts. N dot J represents the number of people in group J. Okay, the dot means taken over all of the values of the subscript. All right. And then we have x bar dot j. If you know what n dot j is, then you can probably guess what x bar dot j is. That's the mean of the, of the jth group, right? And then we have x bar dot dot, which what do you think that is? So if n dot j is the number of people in the j group, x bar dot that's going to be the mean of the overall. That's the overall mean. Okay. Make sense? Okay. Alright. So we have all of those values. We have all of those values. And let's let's sort of write this out longhand. So how many people in the first group? Eight. Eight. And what is the mean of the first group? Uh, Minus right. the overall mean right. squared plus 8 times Now is this really 8.8 .8 or is this like 8.875? Hmm? The overall mean is it 8.8? Yeah. And then we're going to have 
9 divided by, or multiplied by 10.1 minus 8.8 .8 squared. For those of you who, you know, I know all of you have been reading, just studying this stuff like, oh my god, I can't get enough of this stuff. What is, if I were to rethink this value, what is the expected value for everybody in group A? It's the mean of group A, right? right? So if I were to do this in a regression framework, Right? If I were to do this in a regression framework, could I rewrite this equation this way? Uh, can I erase this? Right, but keep this in mind. Keep this in mind. The idea of is what is variance? If I weren't doing an ANOVA and I were doing this in regression, <coughs> bless you, could I have written the equation that one? Is there any fundamental difference between this equation and this equation? First of all, does this look familiar? It is a sum of squares. Right? Remember when we computed the, the, uh, the model sums of squares when we did regression and correlation? That's what this is, right? Is there any fundamental difference between those two equations? Or is the ANOVA merely a shortcut? It's like a long cut. It's actually a short. It's a shortcut because each of these yi's, what's what is the yi in every one of the a and the in the people in group A? It's going to be the same thing. So why can't I just get the overall mean? Subtract it from the, you know, get, subtract the grand mean from it, and instead of doing this eight times for group A, just get the deviate and multiply it by the number of times people are in that group. Isn't it the same thing? It is. It's the same thing. Can you say it one more time? Yeah. Okay. So when we did regression, mm -hmm. right, we came up with an expected value, the y hat i. Yeah. For every person. Yeah. So if I were to write this equation for group, if I were to write this for group A, mm -hmm. it would be 5 minus 7.25 squared, 6 minus 7.25 squared, 6 minus 7.25 squared, mm -hmm. da, 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 right? Mm -hmm. What is the expected value of uh, yi for everybody in group A? 7.25. So I'd have to, instead of multiplying it by the number of deviates, mm -hmm. I just have to add them up. I don't know about you. What's easier, addition or multiplication? I'm going to go addition. I'm going to go with multiplication. <laughs> <laughs> because here I have to do two operations. I have to do the subtraction and then the multiplication. Here I have to do the subtraction and the multiplication eight times, so that's 16 operations. Mm -hmm. okay. Make sense? This is just a shortcut for this. It's the same thing. So what are you doing on the second equation? I just don't get it yet. Okay, so let's look at this here, okay? Mm -hmm. So I have x bar dot j. Mm -hmm. That's the mean. Every mean, I'm going to subtract the grand mean, 8.8, mm -hmm. .8 from each of these values. Mm -hmm which is equivalent to um, subtracting the yi's from every one of these values, right? The yi for anybody in this group is going to be what? 10.1 minus the grand mean. Mm -hmm. Well, instead of doing that nine times and adding them up, I'm just going to do it once and multiply by nine. Same thing. Gets me the same answer. That make sense? Okay, so let's do that. So what is, uh, first of all, let's, let's do this step by step because we said that sums of squares, if we don't square the values, what's going to happen? And if I add up just the deviates? 
Gonna, let's prove that to ourselves. So what is seven and a quarter minus 8.8? Negative 1.55, yeah. What is 8.875 minus 8.8? .8? 0.075. What is it? 0.075. That, and then what is 10.1 minus 8.8? .8? 1.3. 1.3? I bet if you were to add this, these quantities up, they're going to equal 0. Because hmm? I didn't square it. Right. Because it's still an, an expected value minus uh, an, an observed value minus an expected value. I add all of those things up. And by definition, it's going to equal zero. So let's square those things. Square the deviates and get it this way. I have a conceptual question. Mm -hmm. So if you are looking at a data set, and maybe this isn't the right place to talk about it, because you can tell me that. Like, if you have a lot of um, between group variance, mm -hmm. as good. well as a lot of within group variance, okay. the ratio of those two things is like a certain number, right? Yep. And then if you have less variance, both between and within, mm -hmm. you could have the same ratio. That's exactly right. So are you going to have, like, how is that reflected? Because you're less confident in your results mm -hmm. if there's a lot of variance. So how is that reflected in your final is test? It, yeah. like. Is the p-value going to be the same if you have the same ratio but more variance within each group? What's going to happen? Let's get to that. Okay. Okay. Right. Let's get to that. That's a great question. We're not there yet. Okay. But remember, from regression, we computed a root mean square error. Keep that mm -hmm. in the back of your mind. Okay. All right. So does everybody see how this is? This equation is the same as this equation. It is. It's the same equation, so that's the ANOVA is a shortcut. The reason that we can take the shortcut is because this is these are categorical groups, right? So the deviances we know are all going to be the same, which is kind of cool. Right? So what do we get when we do this operation here? We get the total between, when we get the between group sums of squares. For each one you want? Huh? You want for each one? So if I were to do this, What's the answer to that? 34.74. Yeah. 34.74? Okay. Mm -hmm. 34.47. Okay. 34.74. Okay. Okay. Good. So this answers the question what's the degree to which? The scores, the group means, vary around the grand mean, right? That's the between group sums of squares. Now, what I can do is I, what happens if I have a sums of squares and I divide it by the degrees of freedom? What do I get? I get a variance. So what, so if I divide 2 into 34.74, what do I get? So 17.37. 17.32? 7. 37. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So now we have to look at the within groups variance, right? So the between groups variance is the degree to which the group means vary around the grand mean. Okay? So if I were to compute the within groups variance, the within group sums of squares, how do you think we would do that? It is, it is simple. It is just. Like, so each value minus the mean of that group? Each value, from, from each value, we're going to subtract the group mean. The group mean, yeah. exactly, and square it. So the sums of squares within, or since this is Philadelphia, we'll just say with it. <laughs> right? That's kind of fun. Within each group? 
So I have xij, what is xij? Some individual value, minus x bar dot j. That's the, the mean of the j group, okay? So this is exactly what, what she was saying. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract 7.25 from every value in this column. What am I gonna do to this group? Subtract 8.875. And what am I going to do in this group? Okay, good. So I'm going to leave that to you to give me uh, to give us to give us the answer. So why don't we do this? So instead of us doing all of the same kind of work, why don't we break the class up into the four of you do for group P, the middle group of you do for group B, and you guys over here do group A. Make sense? Doing whatever yeah. for the last, I think, yeah. line to drive the 10.1 down. Okay, so I did that. Are we supposed to actually go ahead and do this work? Yeah, it's where yeah. And some. I got the last one. Yeah. Six more. By group. I only have my group. Oh, oh you only have your yeah. group? Get the uh, variance. I have a variance. Multiply it by seven. Seven. Because that's the that's denominator. Great. That ought to give you the sums of squares. <coughs> now I ask you, did you want to do those 16 operations or were the two operations sufficient? Right, so I guess those two operations were, yeah. were sufficient. Aren't the dots in our formulas kind of, don't we even not need those first ones? Doesn't the information sign tell you you're going from? No, because I could just, I don't know what I'm subtracting, but the I's and the J's tell me here. No, 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 you need the I's and the J's. Don't we not need that dot? For here? Yeah. No, I need that there. Oh, because I guess that, we have because I like the one before we didn't. When you only have one. Uh, oh, well, for completeness, you would need it. For completeness. I gotta get you the one. 24.89. Did I for A? You guys got a 24.89. Oh, for D. That's what, I, that's what I meant. You guys both get that? All three of you got that? All we all got it. Mine was spreadsheet. Yeah. What'd you get? 24.89. Twenty-four point nine nine. Twenty-four. Did I capture that right? Yeah. One says yes, the other says eight. Nine. Okay. Are we 
we doing? Am I Okay, I'm gonna start. We got 19.5. 19.5? Anybody else get that? Independent of each other? I have these around with it because I put in these. Because I have like does everyone sort of appreciate why we spent all that time on the basics? Because mm -hmm. that's all this stuff is. So this and what we're doing is just like some squares that we've learned put in here for a while. Ago. Can. Can I put, cause there's yeah. more in this group, right? So really, if you truly understand, like up until like week eight of a 12 week introductory statistics course, I mean, you really get it, you get like 85% of all statistics. But you don't know it. But you don't know it. <laughs> what? You said you're screwed? What? It does the right one for But really, have, have we done anything new? No. It's, it's, so instead of being intimidated by, ooh, the big names, break it down into the component parts and you're like, oh, right. I haven't found any books that break it down like this, which makes it hard. Huh? I've been writing one for like 15 years, and I just haven't had time to finish. I'm sorry. It's okay. I just wanted somebody else to tell me it was right around. Did you guys finish? You guys are so funny. You have 14 points. Tell me if it's right or wrong. By now, you guys should appreciate. Yeah. There is no right or wrong. <laughs> what, did you guys, what did you guys get? B? Did you guys get B? 14.875, but that doesn't equal the variance times seven. Oh, okay. Well, it's something, something messed up. A variance yeah, divided by seven. Divided. divided by seven, yes. Um, well, hold on a second. So it's going to be the variance is going to be some squared divided by degrees of freedom. I want to get this. I'm going to multiply it. Something, something got messed up somewhere. Because that's just simple algebra. Well, we need to divide by 6. B. B. Or something like 14. You just got 14.8. Yeah. But I got 14.88, but that's what I yeah. have precision on. 14.875, exactly. 14.88. I know that, but. Close <laughs> but I thought we were being precise. Oh. Okay, I was doing six we decimal are. points. So it's not to mess this up. I need that five <laughs> thousands back. I normally get that five thousands, so I had to do six decimal points. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, good. Okay. To see what all, all you've done here is it's just it's just basic stuff, right? All right? So, what really have you done? What you really did was Does that look familiar? Remember once long ago we wrote an equation that looked like this? Uh, remember we did that? You're doing the same thing again. Regression, every ANOVA that you do is a regression. Same thing. Okay, so to get the within group sums of squares, all I have to do is add these things up. That's it, that's all I need to do. So what happens when I add them up? What'd you get? I got 59.265. Okay. Something like that. Okay. All right. So, once again, 
I have degrees of freedom, I have sums of squares, and I have degrees of freedom. What can I do? Divide the degrees of freedom into the sums of squares to get? Variance. So what happens when I, when I divide 22 into 59.26? 2.69. What, what is it? 2.67. Six nine. Nine. 2.69. Okay. Um, so, back to our, our drawing, right? Back to our drawing. If I wanted to figure out what the total sums of squares are from this table, could I do it? Just sum everything up. Hmm? Just sum everything up. Yeah, I would add up the between and within sums of squares, right? That's all I would need to do. And what do I get when I add those two things together? If I took this sums of squares divided by 24, I get, I ought to get the overall variance, right? So what's 94 divided by 24? 3.92. 3.92. 3.92. Okay, all right. So we're almost done. We're almost done. So really when we talked about the analysis of variance, we really were talking about how much variability, and I do mean variability in this case, is there due to our between groups factor relative to our within groups error, right? So when you think about ANOVA or regression, right? Because we've just sort of proven to ourselves that same thing, dude. It's all the same, right? We can think about the between groups sums as uh, the, the between groups variance as signal. Signal, right? If there is a difference between the groups, how strong is that signal? The within groups variance is noise. That's the stuff in the model that we can't explain. By definition, we can't explain it. Why are these values different? And the answer is, oh. I don't know, I'll have to write another grant application, keep, keep feeding the machine, <laughs> right? right? Thank God for this within groups variance, otherwise we'd do, like, do two studies and like, okay, next, right? Science would be so easy. It'd be so easy, Tom could do it. Right? Okay. So to reject your null hypothesis, you want to, uh, a high variance between yes for a low a, well compared to within oh, we want relatively exactly. lower within we want we want a strong signal with minimal noise exactly okay so the F statistic is going to be the MS between divided by MS within that's all it is it's the ratio of two variances that's why, you know, it's sometimes easy to think about it as signal to noise. So what happens when we do that, you know, crazy division? What do you guys get? Now, 
before we do anything else, let's talk about what we could do next, because we have some options. Can I ask a really stupid question? No stupid question. It was like three seconds ago, but it's just how, remind me how we got the 34.7 more and the 59.26. Where did we, what did we add to get those? Okay, to get the 59.26, we looked at the within group sums of squares. We added those three. And we just added them up. Right. right. And then 34. The 34.74 is the between groups variance. That's that's the, the mean of each group with the grand mean subtracted from it multiplied by the number of people in each Great, of the groups. And you're creating this uh, sum of square totals is the, the model plus the error. Yeah. What are you like getting, which one is like in the situation? What do you mean? Hmm? Your, which, which one is which? What? Is model between the like oh, oh, got it, yeah. sorry. Yeah, good question. Thank you. All right, now, what's another name for error? Well, statistically speaking, we had error. We called it. We came up with synonyms for this. So when we when we write down, we can actually write down error. The first time we wrote down error, we wrote it down this way. Remember, we wrote that. By the way, this is all we've been doing all semester. I don't know if you realize that yet. But this is all we've been doing. This is all statistics. Is. Fundamentally, that's what this is. What we just did. Right. right. So error is what? It's the observed value minus the expected value, right? Right. So error is going to be our within. Is a, every ANOVA is a regression, but not every regression is an ANOVA. There's one more question. Given yes. the F of 6.45, is there anything to say about that? Well, that's one. Well, let's, okay, so that was one. That's where we were going next. All right. All right. Are we ready to talk about now that we have this table, <coughs> what can we do? Let's, uh, all right, so Susan wants to, there are a couple of options. There are a slight two options we can do first. Where's the two options? One option is examine our F. That's what Susan wants to do next, or is asking about. Another option is to look at effect sizes. What do you want to do? The effect sizes are easy. <laughs> you already know how to do that. So let's do that one next because it's easy. And actually has a more intuitive interpretation. So how do, in words, how do we interpret this R squared here? Right, you've seen this before, yeah? Yeah. Quantifies how much the model accounts for the variance that you see. Yeah, right. So it's a ratio, right? It's, or it's a proportion. It's not a ratio, it's a proportion, right? I guess a proportion is a ratio, right? But it's a proportion. It's a, and a proportion is some part of a whole, right? Mm -hmm. So what is the whole here that we're talking about? Not H O L E, W H O L E, that's what we're referring to. All the variance. All the variance in the outcome. So we don't do we do we have some estimate of the total variability in the outcome? And what is that? It's not the 3.92, right? Look at our model. It's 94, right? So if we think of 94, that's the total variability, right? Right? 
these things are nothing more than transformed, right? So if I want to know how much of the model, what percent of the total that the model explains, what number am I going to divide? 34.74. The 34.74. So I don't know what that is. So if you look at the history of statistics, <clears throat> these ANOVA procedures were developed in uh, agriculture. So you had a bunch of, that's actually a lot of statistics were developed in agriculture. Mm -hmm. So um, we had the people in agriculture who were dealing with plots of land, categorical plots of land. I have this farm and this farm and this farm and this fertilizer and this seed and all that kind of crap. And regression was developed by, uh, in another discipline, mostly in econometrics. So the econometricians and the people who developed regression, they called it this R squared thing. The people who developed ANOVA, well, they didn't like that letter because it's, you know, it's, it's a Roman letter. And if I'm talking about a parameter estimate, they wanted to use a Greek letter, and they used the Greek letter eta. Eta, E-T-A, eta. So if you see somebody reporting an eta squared, which looks like a squiggly N, capital N, that's an R squared. It's the same thing, right? It's the same thing. And it's funny, sometimes if you read an article, you can tell what kind of software the, the users, uh, the, the author has used. Because when SPSS does regression in ANOVA, it doesn't report an R squared, it reports an eta squared. Same thing. Same thing. All right. So, what can we say at this point? What can what can we say? So you can say that the the variance between the groups accounts for thirty seven percent of the overall variance. Mm -hmm. We can say that. Is that a lot? It's a good amount. It depends, that's the answer, it depends, right? Probably in medicine, right? Because this, this is really measures like time to number of days till blister going awayness or something like that, right? So if I can explain 37% of the variability in some clinical outcome with one thing, that's great. I'm pretty flippin' happy, right? I'm pretty happy. Okay, so let's get to Susan's question. The next thing we need to do, or the next thing we could do, is we can examine the F statistic. So it's a good idea to think about, once again, what that F statistic is actually testing. What is that hypothesis that we're testing with this one factor fixed effects ANOVA? is that there are no pairwise population differences. All of the population means are the same. Okay? By the way, this is the code that we ran last week, or Tuesday rather, and lo and behold, we get all of the same numbers as the computer did. So all that, that, that stuff that you wrote down, same thing. You guys did it, not hard. All right? Helps demystify it a little bit. Okay, so let's talk about that F statistic a little bit, okay? So the one thing that I wanna do next is I'm gonna draw an F distribution. I'm going to draw an F distribution 
based on 2 and 22 degrees of freedom. All right, because remember we talked about how many T distributions there are in the family of the T distributions. There are an infinite number of them. And what this what's distinguishes one T distribution from another? Degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom, right? So the, at the family of F distributions, there's an infinite number of those. Conception. Well, not times two. There's exponentially more. There's infinitely more because there are two degrees of freedom that go into the F statistic, the F um, distribution. So the F function, the F distribution takes two parameters, right? It takes the number of degrees of freedom in the numerator of my F statistic and the number of degrees of freedom in the denominator of my F statistic, right? So thinking about it this way, Will I ever have a negative F statistic? Is that possible? Think about it for a second. It's the ratio of two variances, and variances are what? Why are they positive? They're always squared. Because they're squared. So what's the smallest F, st F statistic I could have? Zero. Zero. What's the largest one I could have? Infinity. Infinity, right? So in this case, and since it's squared, it's not going to be symmetrical like we've been used to looking at, right? So the T distributions were normal-ish. The family of F distributions are not symmetrical. All right. So I'm going to draw our T. This uh, I'm sorry, our F distribution. So this is our F distribution based on two and twenty-two degrees of freedom, right? I'm, I'm just confused because, like, if I put those, so this is kind of going back. If I put those three columns in, it's three different groups. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to just do an ANOVA and state it, like... In three different groups. Because like those groups, like A, B, and P, because mm -hmm. you added all of those up to, to get these eight numbers over here, right? To so get the right. overall mean and the within groups, yeah. And if I if I put that into stata, it would just be like, a, the command would be ANOVA, and then group one, group two, like var, variable one, variable two, variable three? So we'd have, you'd have to put the data in like this. Instead of three columns, you'd have to have two columns. The first column, or one of the columns, would be your group assignment, and then your second value would uh, be your outcome. Okay. Okay. It's just helpful to draw it on the board that way. Sure, sure, sure. No, that makes more sense. I was just it. trying to figure out like exactly how you would do that. But that okay. Was right. Okay. So here is the F value. I just stopped it at ten, but theoretically it goes on forever, right? To positive infinity, mm -hmm. right? So our F statistic was somewhere around, what was it? 6.45. I'm going to raise this so I can write it on the board in our screen. distribution, right? Because our distributions were symmetrical, right? This distribution is not symmetrical, right? Our F statistic, which I just erased, was what, 6, 4, 5 or something like that? Yeah. Probably going to be about here-ish, right? So if we're going to set our alpha at 0.05, that means we need to find the value on this F distribution at which 5% of the data fall above it. Okay? We refer to that as our critical value, just like we did with our T, with our T distribution. Except in our T distribution and our normal distribution, which were symmetrical, we had a rejection region, a fail to reject region, and another reject region, right? Because this is not symmetrical, we're only going to have two regions. So to find the critical value for the F statistic based on 2 and 22 degrees of freedom, I'm going to use the inverse F function. 
Remember in Stata Lab a couple weeks ago, we talked about the density functions and all that? People were like, why the hell am I ever gonna need to know that shit? Well, first of all, you can draw curves like that and explain to people where your F statistic falls, right? The other thing you can do is you can say, okay, what is my critical value? So I'm gonna plug in the numerator degrees of freedom, the, den the denominator degrees of freedom, and the quantile that I'm interested in. So I'm interested in the point at which 95% of the scores fall below. And that critical value is 3.44. Back to our curve. 3.44 is going to be somewhere about here. All right, so this means that 5% of the values of this F distribution fall above that value and 95% of the scores fall below that value. So instead of two, three regions, we have two. So here we have our rejection region, I'm sorry, our fail to reject region and our reject region. So here, you know, if Tom were teaching the class, he would call this stuff really fucking ridiculous, whereas the ANOVA is just Fucking ridiculous, okay? Help you remember it that way. Okay? Put that on me. So now you'll remember that forever. Alright? So in what region did our observed F statistic fall? It's in our rejection region. So we know that the probability of observing an F statistic this large or larger is going to happen <clears throat> less than 5% of the time if. If what? If the null hypothesis is true. Does that mean that the null, if we reject the null hypothesis, does that mean that the null hypothesis is false? No. What is our decision? What are we saying? We're saying that. We're confident that it's probably not false. We're probably. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. I couldn't have said it. Before. We're 95. For, we have some. We're pretty <laughs> confident that it's false, right? Most likely, it's false. But could we be wrong? What's the probability that we're wrong in rejecting the null hypothesis? Five percent. Okay, so good. You guys got that. So even though. We had a p-value of 0063, right? 0063. What's still, what's the probability of us rejecting the null, null hypothesis incorrectly? It's still alpha, okay? Well, that's an alpha, right? That's it. There's nothing mystifying about it. So if you can do like week three stuff, really of an introductory statistics course, usually by week three you're doing variances and standard deviations. You're doing an OVA. It's not that hard. And we're good, right? It's all the same. It's the same thing as regression too. All right, so we're done here. So what I'd like to do next week is uh, we have, I have another data set that I want to work with where I'm interested in weight loss, developing a pill, so let's pretend that we're entrepreneur millionaires, or hope to be. And we're going to look at weight loss in rats, the Wistar rats that come across the street. So you have that handout. I gave you that code uh, Tuesday. Yeah. Um, and uh, we're going to use ANOVA and regression so we're going to use regression to ask very specific questions of our data. All right. All right. So that's it. Okay. Um, in the meantime, if you want to take that code that I've given you and run it and play with it and try and interpret what's going on as uh, sort of pr preparatory work for uh, for next Tuesday, go go for it. Okay. So those of you who are looking for something to read over the weekend, what we're going to be doing next class are regressions with dummy coding, deviant coding, Helmert coding, reverse Helmert coding, H-E-L-M-E-R-T.
Hallmark coding. So that's what we're going to be doing, okay? Yeah. Okay, there you go.